go. Retakes and salutations on you individuals. Welcome to another Refi of the Event Live. My name is Eric Lionheim, solo on that Millennium Falcon. Today, as we do a special little countdown, obviously a bit inspired by, eh, we'll call it the insane, crazy, wild, ludicrous, bonkers ending that we got to the finale of not just the LCS and the Summer Split, but the LCS as an entirety, as a league for 10 plus years. Obviously, Team Liquid FlyQuest, the insane base race minion rush ending that we got. So today we are looking at the 10, well, not 10, we got it down to 7 craziest endings that we have had. And a little bit of the caveat here is... I'm talking actual endings, like to the very last hit of the Nexus, how insane these endings were, which means games like Fnatic versus OMG, the classic crazy back and forth, the dramatic ending that Fnatic had, it was actually a couple minutes before the game actually finished, so not on the list. Similarly, the famous inhib respawn against Deft and DRX in 2022 against EDG, Took a few minutes for the game to finish after that inhib respawn. So also not on that list. Despite having insane moments, it wasn't actually the endings themselves. The final smack 50 Gs of the Nexus that were the absolute insane part. So that's exactly what these seven ones were. And we're going way, way, way back in time. Most of you people weren't even old enough to be playing League of Legends probably when this one Happened 2013 and just barely 2013. IEM Katowice and me just saying those words should make you know exactly what play we're talking about. It's a reason we call these back doors the X Peke. This is the OG time it happened. Fanatic versus SK Gaming Ocelot. Yellow Stars on SK at this point, and the game itself is a little bit yucky. The graphics circa 2013, and I gotta say. This play only can happen against champions like Olaf and Cho'Gath who have skill shots and the Nexus seems a little clunky. It seems like there's more room for the Cassidy to run around, but of course, everyone knows this iconic moment. Not quite able to finish the job. But Candy Panda took down Soaz. That means there's going to be a 70 second spawn timer. There's super minions, a massive wave of them going towards the Nexus turret right now. Fnatic have to get back and deal with them. Meanwhile, you can see that SK Gaming are just keeping them delayed. They've got two inhibitors down, and they are just going to pile straight up towards those super minions in the base. You can see there's coming in there. Peke is definitely up towards the Nexus. Kevin is going to be able to go to him. He's trying to do it. But meanwhile, they're in the base. Yellow Star's trying to defend them in the base. Peke is trying to take the Nexus. Is anyone going to be able to deal with this one? Catches him with another axe. He's very low. No! The slow zoom or fast zoom into Ocelot and his scarf being so absolutely devastated after that still gets me uh, to this day. And by the way, remember when guys would wear two headsets? They had one that was for the mic and one that was for, I don't know, better noise canceling. We've come a long way since that 2013 uh, type of gameplay on the Rift. And number six on this list is kind of the more modern version of that expect a play uh, obviously a few differences but we're going to 2020 peak dom one era against apk prince who don't even exist anymore but this was the ultimate 1v9 rise performance i'm talking nuggery does as much damage as his entire team combined in this game on the rise and seals the deal with a pixel perfect nexus race He's going to be able to, I think, get the inhibitor. Yeah, he, he will, okay, for sure. So here's the way that Dom Juan can still win this game. We're going to have a, a really Nuggery. chaotic team play, a teleport into bot lane. Uh, they're just going for the win right now. We don't need to they listen need to, to air shenanigans. Wait. LS says they are going for it here. No way! They're just delaying the back. No! Okay, Equalizer's going to come down. Are they're you? just going for the autos here on the Nexus. Is it going to be enough, Nuggery? He's fighting now instead. He's just got to auto the Nexus here. He has that shield. Are One you more, kidding me? And he's going to end the game. The Nuggery with Nuclear. Get on inside. 
and they make the Nexus go down. I cannot believe that they actually won that game. The timing of the Realm Warp, the timing of the Seraph's Embrace. Remember, this was when it was actually an active, didn't just automatically pop when you reach a certain health threshold. He survives on the final Nexus auto, or the final auto to kill the Nexus. What He has sub 100 HP, and the coolest part about that one, we didn't have it in the clip, but the comms on that, he is so calm, cool, and collected. Basically just says, can we try and end? And then doesn't say anything until the end of the game where he lets out one little chuckle. Uh, Nuggery truly was a sight to behold during that peak Dom Juan era and another guy who retired far too early. We were denied many more years uh, of him being at the absolute top of his game and one of the best top laners on the entire planet. APK Prince is a throwback because, of course, that entire organization doesn't even exist anymore. But there are... Do yourself a favor and go and look at some career montage highlights of Nuggery because this guy was absolutely insane during his peak and Dom Juan during their peak for how dominant they were in the LCK there was a lot of games that they kind of had no business winning just like that APK one uh, where the other squad was in control the whole time and then uh, incredibly fed rise just hey decides you know what I'm going to close this game out. He doesn't have the luxury of having the Cassid and Riftwalk to hop around the Nexus. He's got to do it old school style, just dodge abilities. The way he's able to weave in doing damage to the champions that are trying to defend while also getting in the autos. If you watch that clip, it's slow motion. You can see how he's weaving in an auto attack, then doing his spells uh, on some of the champions to take them down. Absolute masterclass performance there out of Nuggery on that rise. Going to year back, 2019, we'll paint the picture a little bit. Fnatic versus G2. This is the beginning of this insane rivalry. It was the very first split that Caps turn-coded the black and gold. 2019 spring is first split with G2 Esports and that absolutely star-studded stacked roster who were running through everybody in spring. Fnatic was struggling leading up to the finale of the regular season, but of course they deliver... Maybe one of the best, the best, individual games head-to-head -head between the two. This is when Promise Q even subbed in at the end of the regular season because Mickey was having wrist issues. But the calls from Fnatic and specifically Hella Sang in this game were absolutely second to none. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Baron going, the double mountains are the target. That's oh, hard. G2 pushing mid. They have, they're Baron warping. They're Baron warping in. G2 are no. going to the base of Baron buff though. They can get the recalls. How many can they stop? G2, you've got to stop them all. you got to stop them all. They're in the base. G2 are looking for the win. Can they pull it off? The Baron warp. Once again, the Red Baron comes out. They play through the Nexus. The oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no way! The Nexus Tower in the middle side. G2 get the first one. The Red Nexus in the side. Get in the back door. Oh, oh my God! Now, for context, we got to remember a couple of things about this game. First and foremost, Fnatic were completely dominating the early game, got out to an absolutely massive lead where this looked like it shouldn't even be a contest. They were stomping them. Wonders Rise starts getting pretty fed to get back into the game. Also has some insane individual mechanical moments where he's perfectly timing the Rise ulti to dodge a Karthus ult. They have that pixel iframe of invincibility that he did to absolute perfection. And eventually G2 somehow finds their way to get back into this game. And then there's a moment where Hillisang on a Rakan of all champions is solo taking an inhib, which eventually has huge implications and kind of basically wins them the game because they have that exposed they get a couple other in hips there's no respawn to deny them that nexus push but the call to hop right out of the baron pit after Fnatic gets it and rush right to the nexus well g2 is trying to do the same thing i think they get down a couple of the nexus turrets but absolutely insane ending this was kind of this felt like the beginning of what made this rivalry so absolutely insane is because you had the wild finishes like this. Obviously, they would go in to meet in finals after finals after finals, and then Reckless eventually goes over to G2. The saga only got more insane from this 2019 split, but this was absolutely the game that kind of marked the beginning 
of this absolutely incredible rivalry that would last the better part of an entire decade. Rolling forward into the next uh, top four of some of these. And by the way, I, I already alluded to we didn't have the Fnatic OMG game on this list. But if you did, there'd be a whole lot of Fnatic on this list. I'm talking almost half of the matches feature Fnatic in some way. So far, it's been the positive sides. They've been the winners of these absolutely electric, insane, game-wrenching, heart-stopping endings. But number four on this list is unfortunately not them. Coming out ahead, and we're going to peak Fnatic domination. The pre-reckless 18-0, but the spring split of 2015. Unicorns of Love versus Fnatic. We were just highlighting Hillisang on Fnatic, but how about where he started out? On the old Unicorns of Love. Now, this game... The ending is absolutely dramatic, but the back and forth for basically the last 10 minutes of the game are why this is really insane. But the ending itself, again, also very ludicrous. This was the Yorick Cassiopeia Nunu comp that UOL was running with Power of Evil in the lineup. A lot of uh, familiar and forgotten about names in this one, but all it takes is Graves having terribly short range against a Caitlyn, and them forgetting to actually kill the Caitlyn, and the end result is an absolutely insane win for UOL. There is one Nexus turret standing, and the Unicorns say, we will have it. Oh, it's Fnatic caught down. Feather is in trouble. We see that uh, Kikis has dropped as he was channeling his absolute zero. Dredge line knocks up multiple people, but Chachi forced to use that omen of death on himself. I got one. Double kill for Steelback. What can Feather and his Steelback do? Vardax and Power of Evil alive. They do see the Dredge line connects with Hillisack. Look at the carries. They're both rooted in place. Hourglass keeps Huni alive as we see Yellowstar taken out. This is a two. Three versus three in the base. Everything is down. It is it's all on Steelback and Hooney now. and Hooney. The Nexus is standing. Steelback has got Hillisung. He's critting massively onto Vardags. But Vardags and Power of Evil, they are pushing with the minions. Hooney on full HP to Fisho. Will they go in? Glacial Path. We do see the Shard connect. But look at the auto attacks. Power of Evil's got him. Can Power of Evil turn around? Can he get it? From Steelback. He can't Vardags find Vardags. Steelback is looking for Power of Evil. Unicorn to turn it. Unicorn to beat Fnatic. That right there is why UOL was one of the most exciting and beloved teams in the LEC. You saw the passion after they won that game, but you also felt the desperation out of Fnatic in that Nexus defense because you really feel like if Huni and Steelback went in on the same page uh, at the same time, they probably would have been able to kill Power of Evil a lot quicker, maybe even killed uh, Vardags right away and then maybe this is number one on the list because Fnatic is actually taking it back and closing off the game themselves. But definitely chaos filled to close that one out. And it feels like, you know, games just weren't quite as clean, concise, or comms as clear uh, in 2015 as we are you now, a decade later. But still, that game in a whole, watch the highlights from the whole game because the back and forth is absolutely nutty. And the innovation and interesting comp of that Yorick and Cassiopeia if you remember the old Yorick ulti where when you die, you basically come back as a ghost a la Bailout for Renata Glass, except it only lasts a couple of seconds. But the Cassiopeia ghost was absolutely terrifying out of Power of Evil throughout this entire match. And again, another reason there why UOL was such an exciting and fun team to watch on the wrist, uh, on the Rift, excuse me. Uh, noticing a theme of a lot of EU squats being represented on this. I know we kind of started this list because of how the LCS ended with TL FlyQuest, but less North American squads on here and a whole lot of EU, and that's exactly where we're heading, uh, number three on this list, because this is, this is the closest ending. You could talk about context and how it plays out, one being crazier or wilder than this one, but this is the closest because this is... Not just a champion auto attack away. This was like a single caster minion bubble away from the game ending. We're going to 2016, H2K, and Shulka with a whole lot of names that you probably don't remember because they've long since retired or their careers themselves just didn't last too long. Yankos, the lone defender against the five member strong Shalka, he ults in he knows it's done for the tower steadily starting to fall 
everything has gone wrong for H2K. It started so well, but at the end of the day, Schalke absolutely out execute. Exhaust coming down. Can they buy the time? Can they turn this around? Two members hitting the base. Rawls hitting the base. Oh, Rawls Will he die. drop? He's going to drop. Can they turn it around? They're so it's close. Trying. They have the CC. Can they turn it's it back? Up. Triple kill. Yes, it's it's going. Yes. Oh, oh my God! It's up for right the now. one quadra kill, and EU just keeps delivering. Rawls will be out as well. What can they do? No, there's too many members strong. They don't have the CC. It, They're setting their sights. H2K oh, with the turnaround for game one. Yanko's, of course, the only guy still playing from this match, basically. Uh, I love to see how fired up he is, but so often these crazy Nexus ending moments can come down to a couple of plays, individual micro decisions that impact the outcome of the game. But because there was a single auto attack left to talk about, and then you look, rewatch that clip and watch Fox the whole time, because this is 2016 where the turrets were laser beams instead of single autos. They just slowly drained your health. My man loses basically his entire health bar on the rise to a turret. If he simply walks back a bit and comes back in, Shulka wins that game 100 times out of 100. That one single play is an easy one to pinpoint as to the direct reason why Shulka lost there. Unbelievably tilted. You can see Gilius uh, on the cam during that one, but... A quadra kill for Yankos. Absolutely insane ending to that one and remains one of the most uh, iconic individual career highlights out of Yankos as he pops out of the GA and ends up grabbing that quadra kill. Now we're into the ultimate nitty gritty. Absolutely. This is the crazy of the crazy. One you're talking about endings and now we get an LCS squad to talk about on here. And again, this is one of the you can talk about series as a whole craziest because Cloud9 was going really unorthodox to try and take down the powerhouse massive favorite Samsung Blue way, way back at the 2014 World Championship. You had Metal Gear Solid Snake Zed out of high trying to sneak through vision to get inhibs. And then this all culminating in the Game 4 showdown trying to force that elusive silver scrapes and game five. It didn't come down to one single auto, but one key engaged to catch out the Yasuo and Twitch and Cloud9 goes for the end and they get oh so close, but just come up short. Five seconds, four timers, what can Cloud9 do? This is reminiscent of Kaboom getting picks on the carries. They got the two main carries shoving up mid. They're going to go for this inhibitor. They have to get the inhibitor down, though. Only a couple of minutes to work with. They can do it. Clever work from Spirit. He's going to try and cut the line off, but this is going to be one in him down. And Cloud9, they may try to keep pushing. Go for the win. Death Timers, it's 20 seconds still. This they is... have to go for the Nexus turret. They've got to push in there. Go Clever for the win. Tanking it up. Here comes Spirit. Forget him. Try and get the Nexus turret. Oh. Super Minions, they have the team barreling down that midline and surely, for God, they could be facing their sister team, Samsung White, in the semi-finals. Surely got this one, there's still 10 seconds. It's gonna take a bit of a miracle here for Cloud9. That Nexus turret will be finished off the focus onto the Nexus and Samsung Blue with an amazing ending here in game number four. First off, my God, how long has Maokai been OP? Even with a completely different toolkit, still being picked uh, in that top lane as a beefy bruiser. But talk about individual micro mistakes being enough to completely change these base races. The heartbreaking part is Cloud9 basically plays that as cleanly as you possibly could on the Nexus. They're all on the same page because they're following their Lord and Savior high in his shot calling, but still just coming up short yes they probably would have got smashed even if they forced a game five but what an absolutely insane ending to an absolutely insane series but it wasn't 
even more insane than number one on this list. I feel like everyone knows what match has to be number one on a list like this. Of course, we're going to the 2018 World Championship. KT versus IG. Game three, the fact that the reverse sweep ends up coming up short for KT after winning this third game in such insane fashion speaks to the mental fortitude of IG and the players on that squad. By far the craziest part of this play is the fact that Smeb TPs out of his own base where there's a Fiora beating down on his Nexus turrets because he knows he can't win that 1v1, goes to help out his team and secure the insane dub. Got the Shy in the bottom lane, but Shy has no TP. This is going to be your game ending push one way or the other. It's KT going for the base. It's going to be a base race. Nexus turret number one, taking down to half HP. KT looking to end it right here, right now. Ning taking down to half. It's Shy versus Smep at the base. At the same time, Bottom's going to be taken very low. Yukau barely going to be kept alive. Score taking down to one corner. Smep nearly going to be killed now as well. Def taking so low. The Blade Call is not able to find him. Def goes in a killing spree. It's the Shy still in the base. It's KT looking to try to stand and fight if they can. The Shy has made his way onto the inhibitor turrets, onto the Nexus turrets. They're going to be taken down. KT still marching. It's a base race. The Shy's on the blue Nexus. KT's on the red. Who's going to win? The Shy will not. And KT takes it to game four. Holy crap. <laughs> You know it's an absolutely bonkers ending when the camera is zoomed in on the wrong nexus and has to do that sweep of shame across the map to the other one, which ultimately ends up killing it first. But unbelievable. Also one of the best calls of all time because Captain Flowers is absolutely popping off with the insanity that goes on between KT and IG. But that really felt like it was quarterfinals, but it was the world finals for that one because KT still to me feels like the second best team that was at that world championship and of course ultimately dropping that one to IG who would win the whole thing but I don't see any match ever being able to top the absolute lunacy that was that third game between these two squads but here's to many more crazy endings in the games to come but that is it today for League Unlocked my name is Eric thank you to all you wonderful people as always for hanging out and supporting us